Project Zomboid has changed quite a lot since its first release 12 years ago. Pretty much everything besides the game's concept has been changed. From the characters, to the zombies, to the map itself. And even though I didn't play Project Zomboid back when it first released, I decided to try out a recreation of the original map. So without further ado, here's how it went. I spawn in what seems to be some kind of forest area. After walking up a tiny bit, I see some kind of road and decide to follow it. There also seems to be some kind of campsite here with some very ominous blood around it. After walking up a little bit more, I find myself in the city area. For some reason, there is some kind of an office building here. It really doesn't have any interesting loot. After quickly killing the one zombie inside, I decide to go up. I see this sort of big burnt down house here and figure maybe there's something interesting here. Looking inside though, there's a generator in here. I don't know if that's luck or just part of the map, but either way, it's a pretty cool find. While there was really nothing of value in the little warehouse, it seems that the burnt town building is some kind of hardware store. Inside I found some tools I could use as weapons and some construction materials I could use to reinforce whatever house I decided to survive in. I then saw a Knox Bank building and decided to break in. Even though I'm using the regular apocalypse preset, there's really few zombies here, so I figure it's part of the map. I decide to make my way into the back of the Knox Bank building. Here I saw multiple locked doors, but one of them actually seemed to have loot behind it. I decided to just hit it with my hammer until it broke. In here there was an absolute stash of ammunition. For some reason there were no weapons, but there were some modifications and quite a few magazines too. I would definitely be coming back here later. After exiting the Knox Bank, I made my way into this park. I only had an idea of where one specific building was and it was meant to be the building I'd use for my base. This was the house that I decided on using. If I'm not mistaken, this is where Bob and Kate live in the original Project Zomboid. While it doesn't have the greatest loot, it's going to be the place I use for a base. Why? Just because I want to. Walking down the street, I noticed a barricaded house. This means that it's a survivor house and you're pretty much guaranteed to find food and weapons inside. There were, however, quite a few zombies in there too. After clearing out the last zombie down here, I went to the kitchen. Here were some weapons and a little bit of canned food. But I know that there's another thing that happens quite often in these survivor homes. Entering the bathroom, my suspicions were confirmed. There were a ton of drawers here. A lot of them actually containing quite useful loot like weapons and ammunition. Additionally, there was a ton of canned food up here. Since it was so close to my house, I decided to just bring it all back. I also brought back some sheets with me, which were pretty useful so I could start blocking out the downstairs windows. The next step would be to find planks that I could use to barricade all my windows and maybe even the doors. I 
decided to go back out and explore around a little bit more. After all, I still had sunlight. My first stop was the Knox Bank. Since there were so few zombies hanging around, I decided to bring back all that ammunition I found here into my safe house. After getting back home, I put all this where the ammo I found in the survivor home was. If I had guns, I could probably take out all of the zombies I'd find for the rest of the playthrough. The next building I decided to loot was an alcohol store. Even though it looks like books are on the shelves, it's actually all alcohol. The most useful thing here was going to be bourbon, since I could use it to disinfect wounds and make molotovs. Since it wasn't quite nighttime yet, I decided to explore a couple more buildings. Anything I could find would be useful here. Just by walking around on this map, you can kind of feel how dated it is. Most of the houses just use this weird brick texture for their walls, compared to modern Project Zomboid where you have all kinds of different colored houses. Additionally, there's very few furniture options and most rooms are kind of empty. Eventually, I find this big supermarket type place. If there was any good place to get myself a lot of food, it was going to be here. So I decided to just start hauling everything. I now easily had enough food to last me for months. In fact, I've pretty much filled out the entire drawer with just food items. At this point, I knew I wouldn't have to go scavenging for food anymore. But still, I wasn't satisfied. On day two, I'm up early to get to exploring. Even though Knox County is a much smaller map than the one we currently have, I'd say it's comparable to a place like Riverside for the most part. I start off by checking out this weird store of some kind. There were some zombies inside, but nothing I couldn't handle. In terms of loot, it wasn't anything special. There were some plonkies which I decided to take alongside some chip bags. But besides that, it's really nothing special. Just another place to get non-perishable food. Outside, I noticed that there was some kind of a shack in the forest here and I went to check it out. Going inside, once again, there was really nothing special here, but there was another generator, which is interesting. Either this map has a lot of predefined generator spawns, or I'm just getting really lucky here. Also, the in-game map doesn't work for some reason. After quickly beating a homeless woman to death with a baseball bat, I go into this weird burnt down building. It has another generator and inside this small garage section we have some metalworking gear. I'm not going to use that for the time, so I decide to head in deeper into the building to see what else it has. From what I can gather, this building seems to be some sort of a hotel.
I then moved on to the second floor of the building. Here there were some illegal floating boards, but besides that, not much. Once again, I think this is a hotel as there seem to be a lot of residential rooms. I also narrowly missed getting hit in the back here. The third floor is where things actually get interesting. It's still just bedrooms, but at least these look cool. Due to the fact that some of the floor is missing, I decided to use the walk to function here. I found even more ammo in this room, but still no weapons. The third floor was pretty much pitch black just because everything was burnt down here. The only way to move around was using the move to option. There were some crates up here and they actually had weapons for once. And there was also even more ammo here. At this point I just have so much ammo that I will never realistically get through it all. At this point I have enough food to last me forever and even more ammunition. But unfortunately there's really not a lot of zombies to use it on. I then return to the city area just to see if there's any zombies around. I see this large skyscraper and decide to go on inside. Unfortunately for me, there's quite literally one zombie in this building. I have no idea why so few zombies spawn in this map. I am literally using the default apocalypse preset. So there should be a ton of zombies around here. As for the rest of the skyscraper, there was really nothing of value here. Now armed and ready to take on anything, I decided to explore the map. I didn't really have much else to do here. Unlike most of the series I've been doing, this video was extremely easy. I decided to check out these houses here. They all seemed to have their garages open, but there was absolutely nothing in said garages. Additionally, pretty much every house seemed to be empty. Moving down to the house right next to it, it seemed to be pretty much just a carbon copy of the house before me. Yet another difference from the current Project Zomboid map. The chances of you finding any houses that actually look or feel entirely the same are very low. But at least this one had a corpse with two rifles on it, so I guess that's more guns for me. On my way back home, I found another one of the, like, 20 zombies that I find throughout this entire playthrough. At least this one had a holster, so now I could carry a pistol with me. After dropping off my two new rifles, I found a single fireman zombie walking the streets. Fireman gear would be more useful if there were actually any zombies I would have to protect myself from. After taking out these two zombies at the hardware store, I decided to steal some planks. Additionally, since I had a cleaver I could use to chop down trees, I decided to take a saw. After quickly making it back home, I started putting away all my new loot. I then decided to start barricading the windows. 
I was essentially barricading the windows out of pure boredom as there really weren't any zombies around. At this point there was really not much to do in the day, as I decided I would leave it to tomorrow to cut down some trees and finish barricading my house. The very next day I decided to go back out. At this point I was literally just looking for anything I could do here. Soon enough I found a zombie I could take out. It wasn't much, but it was better than sitting around doing literally nothing. I continued to barricade my downstairs windows, really just because I had nothing better to do and I thought it looked cool. At last I had some visitors that found me and promptly started attacking my windows. By now, pretty much every window had been barricaded inside and outside. Now and then, one or two zombies would still show up, so I decided to barricade this window in particular just a little bit more. At this point I'm pretty sure I've done essentially everything I could do in this map. It's very small and I wasn't expecting to get a lot of gameplay out of it, but all in all I'm still shocked at how much I was able to do. All in all, Project Zomboid has had one of the most drastic changes comparing its initial release to its current state. In fact, there are few other games that through only updates went from being 2D to being pretty much full 3D. When you play on this map you can really feel how much better the devs have gotten at map design. And you can also see just how much more expensive their tile sets have gotten. But now that we're almost at the 20 minute mark, I think that's enough filler commentary. So that's all for today. Thank you.